to be sitting with these two gentlemen here um, to basically um, bring to the fore a new significant transformational partnership. Now, about a year ago, um, I stood in front of uh, you and I spoke about Telecom's new strategy. And I want to reiterate what I said uh, in August of 2020, that Telcom had decided an, um, to embark on a new journey, a new transformational journey in which we would systematically transform Telcom into the technology partner of choice to all our various customer segments, you know, individual retail customers, our corporate customers, our public sector customers, we have to become the technology partner of choice. And in the course of the last 18 or so months, the world, and we are part of it, has experienced a near existential crisis, out of which certain um, realities have arisen. And it is in times or epochs such as what has happened with the COVID pandemic that has completely upended the world, that new ways of life and living emerge. What has become clear and plain to us is that data is a fundamental human right. Just as much as water is a necessity, for every living being, all seven billion of us on earth, it is emerging that data clearly is a right. Last year, we had the unfortunate happenstance, especially in this part of the world, where certain kids continued schooling and learning virtually because they had access to data. They had access to the virtual world through which all sorts of facilitation was happening. Social existence, professional existence, schooling was happening virtually. But, but the majority, the majority of kids were sitting at home waiting for the day when physical classes would resume. And in the process, falling further behind their more privileged fellow citizens. And you could tell that story in healthcare, you could tell it in terms of social interaction, when the doors closed on our offices, when the doors closed on planes and buses and matatus, certain families continued to commune together virtually, while other families, other than over the phone, and many of them not even over the phone, didn't see each other for months. So the fact that data is an absolute necessity and nobody should be denied data is something we as Telcom have become cognizant of and we want to be part of the leadership towards bridging this digital divide with our partners, um, NEC, Exxon and Ericsson. So what does this demand? It demands that we have a network that is up to date a network that speaks to the future of our existence in this country. We have mob a mobile network, fiber network, mobile financial services, and in all these areas, we are determined to make sure that we both expand, upgrade, up, uh, upgrade, and update our network, and be able to access everyone in every corner of this country. So technologically, expand our network, commercially make that network affordable and easily accessible to everyone across this country. And so today, I come here um, to make this announcement that we are going to be partnering, we're launching a major partnership with NEC Exxon and Ericsson, and uh, the two gentlemen will shortly be speaking. Uh, given their perspective of our partnership, but from my perspective, I could not, we could not have better partners to work with. And a partnership that is unique, because it 
cues to the true elements of a partnership, where there is mutual benefit for all partners, where there's a win-win aspect to the partnership, and where we have a long-term view, knowing full well that the beneficiaries will be all our various consumers and customers in the years to come. A partnership that understands that we have to grow together. Obviously, uh, there's no question that um, um, NEC Exxon and Ericsson are major, major global players. And we as Telcom are very happy uh, to have uh, this partnership. So when I say grow together, I mean grow together in this country um, and in this region. So thank you very much. We intend uh, through this partnership to enhance our data 4G footprint significantly. We will grow our 4G footprint by adding 2,000 additional sites, 4G sites over the next two years at a cost of over $100 million. That's the investment we plan to put in uh, into our network over the next couple of years. Um, that will actually quadruple, more than quadruple, our existing 4G data coverage and we will cover the entire nation. As I speak right now, we have begun in the coastal region where, as I speak, we are putting up with our friends at NEC um, a significant number of 4G um, uh, base stations. So as I speak right now, this is a formal announcement launching the partnership, but on the ground, practically, it's already a reality. Um, and I expect full well in, in the next few weeks and months, starting with the coast, where we've commenced the network expansion and upgrade, the impact and effect of this uh, network will begin to be felt. Network modernization, service availability, reaching that digital divide. And I know that often times we use jargon and euphemisms like bridging the digital divide, but I want to spell it out very clearly today. Bridging the digital divide is about making sure that everyone is connected to the virtual world via telco. And everyone should be able to have access and afford it. And Telcom is determined to do that. This is why we have launched recently, and we'll be hearing more about in the next few weeks, our Madaraka Life product and service. Now, Madaraka Life product and service is intended to have everyone able to access data. Everybody get connected. Everybody be able to be part of the virtual reality that has become the globe, uh, the global phenomenon reality. Nobody should be excluded on account of their social status. That is our determination uh, at uh, Telcom via uh, Madaraka Life. But Madaraka Life doesn't work. We don't have the network to support it. And this is why, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have the three of us sitting here today, Telcom, Ericsson, and NEC Exxon, to announce this partnership. With that, I will welcome uh, my colleagues, uh, George, uh, should I call Todd? So Todd, as I ask, uh, you ship that both connects the unconnected, but also deepens and enhances the services we already have today with our existing customers. Um, I mentioned starting at the coast, but we shall be expanding in Nairobi, deepening in Nairobi, the western part of this country, the central part of this country, the Rift Valley part um, region of this country, where we have existing network and customers, we shall deepen it and upgrade it and enhance the services available, and where we don't have connection, we shall connect uh, again. And so with that, I will hand over back to George. Thank you all very much. that we have entered to with both these great companies allows for organic growth to be part of the financing um, of the equipment which, and, uh, we shall be getting from them. So allowing the equipment actually to be installed and then 
uh, finance, that's part of it, but we shall also have inorganic uh, fundraising efforts. Um, and uh, without giving all my trade secrets to everybody in the world, I think that should suffice, uh, that we'll have organic as well as inorganic. So funds which are internally generated by the enhanced network so that the, the relationship that we have with uh, both NEC, Exxon and Ericsson allows us to be able to install the equipment and generate revenues and pay back uh, for that equipment. But of course, uh, they, 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 they must also take care of their, uh, their people, uh, their people at home. And so we will also have an organic ways of raising funds, uh, talking to different financiers, as we unfurl and roll out our uh, strategy, our two-year two -year strategy. Thank you. Your last question is rather broad. <laughs> because I thought that we'd last spend the last half hour talking about exactly what you will gain. Do you want me, you want me to repeat the whole thing? That we will have connected Kenyans connected who are not connected today. Those of you who already are our customers will have better quality of service available to you. And we will be able to allow Kenyans to participate in this virtual reality that has been really forced upon us. And I think, uh, I think it is thought, um, indicated that what the COVID pandemic did was to accelerate trends that already existed pre-COVID. The fact that um, we were virtualizing a lot of our professional and social interaction was already a pre-existing trend, but it was accelerated by an emergency called COVID. And so now Kenyans will be able to participate in that virtual world. In terms of your first question, why these two? Because they came to the party. They came to the table. They uniquely understood where Telcom is today. They bought into our vision, right? And decided, and I thank them profusely for that, they decided that Telcom's vision and strategy and journey is one that they would like to take participate in and walk alongside by side with us. We do not discriminate anybody. We have many technology partners. They have many other um, customers and clients like Telco, but this specific unique relationship arose out of a common understanding between Telco Kenya, um, Ericsson, and NEC Exxon that we uniquely bought into and got into and understood and believe in and are determined to work together um, as, as partners on this journey. I hope that answers your question. Yeah. I don't know if you can. Um, we have 594 G sites out of our 1,500 sites, and uh, we want to add an additional 2,004 G sites. Let's give you a picture of what we're talking about. From 594 G sites to 2,004 G sites, out of our total 1,500 sites, 594 G. But we now want to focus like, almost exclusively on 4G. And just to sort of pin down the 5G story, right? We ourselves are already looking at piloting um, 5G. But frankly, frankly, we have a, a little bit, there's some journey between the need and utility for 5G in Kenya. Um, there's some years to go. So while it's a very exciting topical debate and a lot of people have made some flashy announcements, uh, we prefer to be much more practical. So we are looking at it, at piloting uh, 5G in readiness for the time when 5G will be um, fully available. But by the time we get to handset availability, use cases, frankly speaking, on IoT that really utilize uh, 5G, 4G still has a huge, long runway. And that is where we want to entrench ourselves. My last question. Sorry. That continues. And uh, uh, I believe that as time goes on, um, smartphones will become more available, more pervasive, countrywide, uh, more accessible, more affordable, right? So we are part of that, but we don't, um, we're not a phone uh, selling uh, company. What we do is that we get into programs to try and make sure that smartphones are ever more accessible and affordable across the country. In terms of your first question, huh, I mean, if you asked, if you asked um, Ericsson in uh, 1894, yeah. and uh, NEC 100,
than 20 years ago? If you ask them in 1894 when the journey will end, what will the answer be? Why should this journey end? This journey is over. Are we planning to end this journey? No. If you're asking about when shall we have put 2,000 um, 4G sites up additional, yeah, by the year to end of, end of 2003, right? But our journey, I don't foresee it ending. The idea is to keep it going because technology will evolve. Customer needs and requirements will evolve. This, what we think we know today, will be upended by something else five years from today. And Telcom Kenya and Ericsson and NEC Exxon will be on hand as partners to deal with whatever happens three years down the road, four years down the road, in making sure that um, as the world goes, the dynamism of technology, we are able to bring it to the party and to the table for Kenyans. Thank you all very much. Um, and, uh, and partnership. From a commitment perspective, Ericsson started its business in Africa in 1894. So if we fast forward almost 120 years uh, into the future, into today, uh, we're talking about another kind of commitment that's so, port that's so important for Kenya. As Mr. Mugo pointed out, the, the COVID-19 pandemic has demonstrated what many of us already knew, the fact that broadband is a human right. The pandemic is what showed that for the kids to get the education and you live in a suburban, rural area, you cannot get connected reliably. And the technology for this is going to be fixed broadband in some places, but for Africa and for large parts of Kenya, it's going to be about mobile broadband. But it's not just that it's a human right. We know that for every 1,000 broadband connections, 80 new jobs are created. When you double the speed of mobile broadband, you can get up to a 1% GDP increase. So it's not just the, uh, the human right aspect, it's about the economic growth and the inclusiveness that comes with it. So we're very excited then to be supporting Tough Home Kenya, where we've had a long-term partnership. And we talked about the commitment part, but partnerships are about people and how we work together. And I think on that front, I would really like to give a big thank you to the whole Telcom family uh, for having the, the commitment and the passion and the perseverance, I think, uh, for us to take this partnership to the next level. And you can count on the support from Ericsson. Uh, we'll be with you every step of the way as Telcom Kenya now embarks on the next step of this journey of ensuring that all Kenyans are included in the digital economy. Again, thank you for having me here today and uh, really appreciate uh, the opportunity to, uh, to meet everyone, so thank you so much. I've been um, with NEC for many, many years. Um, Japanese company, 120 years old, and I'm also proud to say that Telcom Kenya is one of our valued customers from the 70s. We've been part of the journey with Telcom Kenya, and when we were invited to be part of this program, um, it's, it's not a discussion we had about bits and bytes. It was a discussion we had about the people of Kenya. And our Telcom wants to enrich the lives of the Kenyan people. Not to showcase we've got this bright, shiny new technology. It is how we're going to apply technology to enhance the lives of Kenyan people to reach the Telco Kenya goal of connecting everybody on a mobile platform which is future-proof and using the assets that Kenya Telecom has got and not trying to reinvent the wheel but bolster the strong and um, good relationships that Telco Kenya has got in the market and we were pulled together in a partnership and not in a supply chain relationship. And for that, I think we are very, very fortunate to be here in this position today and to ensure Telcom Kenya, the Kenyan people, everybody in the press, that we as a partnership where we can uh, contribute to all the Kenyan people to connect them into this new digital era uh, together. Thank you very much.